I'm Kelly Foss and this is lesson three of four in my Drawing What You See and What You Don't online workshop series with Strathmore. Now you have the advantage of seeing what my finished piece will look like. Right now, I have no idea other than I know I'm going to be drawing this beautiful young woman. And then beyond that, we're gonna imagine our way through all the possibilities. Now I'm mostly gonna be drawing with the Lyra Rembrandt Poly Color Pencils, the 12 piece set. I'm gonna be using other drawing tools, but I wanted to talk to you about the paper. When drawing from imagination, I'm experimenting a lot, and you might be the same way too, where you're not exactly sure what mediums you're gonna be pulling from. So I highly recommend Strathmore's Toned Tanned Mixed Media Paper. It's a little bit thicker, which I tend to put a little more wear and tear when I'm experimenting. But for this, I am going to use my all-time favorite, the Toned Tan Sketch Paper. It's a nine by 12 in size, so it's gonna give me some good space to experiment. Okay. Let's get going. Grabbing the 6B, we're gonna jump right into our blocking in process. The whole mass of the body is kind of like a triangle, and then I'm cutting away smaller sections, still staying with my straight lines. It helps to squint at your subject to be able to simplify them down to shapes. I'm looking to get accuracy with my angles. Using straight lines helps us to see the big picture and not get caught up in details. Right now, it's good to draw loose to allow our lines to be movable. Simplifying our structure into straight lines allows me to not only see like the bend of the back, but also point to point like this knee to knee, which really helps to make sure that we're not growing the legs or the torso too long. Our model is the artist Michael Elena, and I love this pose. It's very dreamy. Avoid the temptation to get into details right now. I eyeball a lot of mass comparisons in my drawing process, but you can also do a measured mass comparison, like the head. Top of head to chin hits about on where her leg is at her breast. That measurement again hits about her wrist and then down to below. Remember to pause this video whenever you would like, just to draw at your own speed and be better than I am at taking breaks to sharpen your pencils. Some of my favorite imaginative drawings that I've done have been from times that I've worked with live models where I have continued drawing from imagination after my session with them is over. Like this model, she posed with a book and looked very calm, but I imagined her as Artemis, the goddess of hunt with a bow and arrow and a fierce look. And imagining doesn't always have to be fantastical, sometimes just practical. I didn't get enough time to draw this model's legs, so I imagined her in a dress. As I get more specific, I'm still checking tilts and doing mass comparisons. Facial features are like rungs on a ladder that are spaced out differently. This is a good way to think when blocking in the facial features. I'm looking at the distance from her hair to her brow line, brow line to the eye line, eye line to nose, nose to mouth, mouth to chin. Now I'm judging the distance between each of these areas without committing to drawing the features just yet. I used to tell my portrait students that our first aim is to make it a human and not to worry about likeness because that does take a little more time and attention. I'm gonna grab my Lyra eraser, do a little cleanup and take my Princeton brush and sweep. I've finally sharpened my 6B so I can go back in and refine my lines. Where things have been sketchy and I have multiple lines, I am now being more decisive and choosing a line to go with. Let's start going beyond what we see. I'm trying to feel, is she an angel? Nah, but I do want her to have wings. Ooh, ooh, uh, fairy wings. Okay, upon further investigation, dragonfly wings. When I want a good erase, I will use the white eraser, but I'm going to pull out some of the kneaded eraser just to tap up at areas that I just got a little bit too dark and maybe refine it a little bit better with my sharp pencil. You know, I am so tempted to make her an outfit of leaves, <laughs> but I'm fighting so hard not to go down my imagination rabbit hole. So I will leave her in her outfit because I think a fairy could wear that too. 
I'm refining some of my lines and adding more details here and there. But I know she's sitting on a couch in reality, but here I'm having her sit. Ooh, okay. I am having her sit in a flower, something like a daisy, but I'm not going to get a reality reference here. For the sake of composition, I kind of want something round here. Not a bubble, but maybe just a glow around her. I've used my clean tissue to do what I call a fog out, which is just mussing around all the graphite and using my white eraser to clean up areas that should be light. Necessity is the mother of invention. I'm using this lid to get that circle that I want. And now it is Lyra Polycolor Pencil Time. I am grabbing for the Prussian blue just to outline my dragonfly wings. And I'm going to erase on the paper some of the areas that I'm going to be putting down color. It makes it easier for the paper to receive the color. Brush away the dust to save your drawing from being smudged, your hands from getting dirty, but most importantly, your paper from your finger's oils. Switching to the light blue, doing a nice transition of color. I'm going to have some of the red in there too. And then with a clean bit of tissue, we're going to see how beautifully these colors blend together. Ooh, isn't that beautiful? Let's add a little bit of lemon yellow to that mix and then some red on top of that. I'm going to mix some of the light blue in with a little bit of that red that I laid down and then pop some Prussian blue into that too. I kind of like how plain the wings are right now, but I think I'll probably add a lot more detail. You never know how far you should go until you've gone too far. <laughs> I'm going to outline her orb with this Van Dyke Brown. I'm going to take this red, which is a dark carmine, and make my little flower a red one with a light orange center. A little tissue smudge, and then I'll grab the, bl whoops, the black. <laughs> I've decided this peaceful pose should be because it's nighttime. Let's make this a nice dark blue sky, transitioning to light blue as we get closer to her glow. With a clean bit of tissue, I'm going to flatten out that dither, that static that happens when you are drawing too fast or your pencils aren't sharp enough. Rebuilding those colors and with the black I'm adding the deepness between the petals, which on top of that I'm going to put some of the sap green. Grabbing the black I'm going to start with her hair here. Uh, it might be a little bit too dark. I'm going to grab that Van Dyke brown and outline her head here then go back to the black. This kind of imitates that the light behind her is glowing and I'm leaving a zigzag on her bangs or fringe to not draw in, making her hair look shiny. I'm going to build up the intensity of the colors on the wings with the light blue and the Prussian blue, drawing in some more of those details. There's so many wings to choose from. I'm kind of tempted to do this pose again, but maybe with a monarch butterfly's wings. Next, I'm reaching for the white colored pencil, which is so beautifully powerful right here on the wings. And then I used it all around the circle and then blended it together with the sky. Let's add some more Prussian blue to that sky, as well as some of the light blue, making that powerful transition of white, light blue, Prussian blue, and then black. With the white pencil, I wanna to touch on the areas that are the lightest on her skin. Not all of the skin though, because that beautiful tan paper, we want that to be present. Let's warm up areas of her skin with the red pencil, dark carmine. I'm going to put a little bit of the white on her lips to then just put red back over it. It makes the color brighter. I'm rosying up her cheeks and ear and hands. With the Van Dyke Brown, which I'm always tempted to call Dick Van Dyke Brown, I'm going to do a little bit of shadows on the flesh. With the black, I'm gonna add just a little bit of thickness to the lash line to give the impression of the eyes being ever so slightly open. With the red, I'll build a little bit more rosy blush. And with Venetian red, I'm gonna add this warmth to the hair, but then cool it down with the light blue on the shine of the bangs. I'm adding more context to the wings. Look how bright the lemon yellow looks when layered over the for the saturation that I want in the petals of the flower, I'm going to need to do a lot more layers. 
but let's build up this whole drawing together and add some green to the shirt. From sap green here, let's switch over to the brighter apple green. And then on to some Venetian red, and for details, the Van Dyke brown. To get back to working on the wings, I'm gonna grab the black and just really take my time in getting those individual lines in there. Imperfect, but fun. I'm gonna use the Prussian blue, that nice dark blue, to handle the rest of the lines. I need to do more layers of colors on the petals and the center disc. I'm gonna use the Venetian red as well as the Van Dyke brown and then the light orange over both of those. Look how powerful layering colors is. Okay, the pants need some attention, so let's tone them down with some black. And then on top of that, let's use some Van Dyke brown. If you take your time in drawing and making sure that your pencils are sharp, you won't have as much static, or as they say, dither, as I do. I think I'm gonna make her pants blue just to bring down some of that sky color, deepening the shadows with black. A little more apple green on her jumper, or her sweater. Almost like she's sitting in a furry, fuzzy bean bag. I want to make the outside shape of that center of the flower really look fuzzy. Which, if it is good and fuzzy, I need to erase a little bit so it can overlap where she's sitting on it. And then I'll color back in those sections that I've just erased with some orange. And then if that big glow behind her is really glowing, I need to add a little bit more shadowiness in front of her with the black pencil. I really like the addition of the center of the flower being furry. <laughs> Maybe that's just me. I don't know. I keep adding more and more value to this shadowy side of her. I was first intending this light behind her to not really be behind her, but just her own glow. But you know what? Since it is a night scene, Let's make it the moon. With my 6B graphite pencil, nice and sharp, I am mapping out the moon with little craters and such. And now I'm gonna use the white pastel pencil for the first time in this drawing. Rimming our flower and fairy with moonlight. With a clean bit of tissue, doing a quick smudge of the moon and only the moon. And I'm gonna put back in some of those details that I lost with the 6B. Wow, look at that glow. With the white pastel pencil, I'm gonna just brighten up the moon, certain little spots and dots, and then erase some lighter areas on our subject. So we have space for some moon glow. And I'm gonna erase some dots in the sky too for some stars, which you could use the Polycolor white pencil or the white pastel pencil, but I am using this Lyra white hard pastel and just rimming her with some nice moonlight and a little sparkle on her earring. I'm going to layer color over the white that I've put on the clothing to make just a nice pop of a brighter color. With the white polycolor pencil, I'm just going to rim the moon to add to that brightness of the sky. and with the light blue, making sure that color transitions well. All that's left to do, as you know, I always say it, sign your piece. Okay, there she is. I could have gone quite a few ways with this, and I think I still might. That's the beautiful thing about drawing with your imagination. The more you use your imagination, the stronger it gets. How did you do? I would love to see your work. Please post photos in the forum. For about a month as my videos are being posted, I'm gonna be active in the chat, commenting on your work, answering your questions, critiquing your art if you'd like. I have a saying with my art, imperfect but fun. 
I hope this lesson has sparked in you a new level of creativity, that you let go of the stress of making your art perfect and you allow yourself just to have fun. Thank you to Strathmore for allowing this workshop to happen. And we have one more lesson. Lesson four is five ways to add interest to your art. I'm excited to share these five things with you. Until then, see ya.